Hi everyone, Nisha Menon here, director of Nikka Soo Foods and uh, founder of Jack and Chill. So today I'm going to take you through the costings that's involved while you're importing the goods from abroad into the UK. First and foremost, it is the manufacturing cost. So let's take an example of if you are importing from India into the UK. Obviously, that is my expertise and that's what I'm comfortable in explaining. So let's go with that example. Suppose you found your manufacturer and you're making your products in India. And uh, so the costings they will be quoting you will be for the product itself. They'll be telling you, okay, so this is the cost of the product. And we're going to go for the example of banana chips here. Okay, you need to understand if it's only for the banana chips they're quoting you. Is it for one kilo, 10 kilo or 100 grams? Or is it pre-packed? So does it involve the packaging? Does it involve the carton cost? And does it involve the printing, the labeling? So you need to understand those things as well when the manufacturer is quoting you. So all those costs, it, I would highly recommend you go with the manufacturer to give you the cost of the packaging and the carton and the printing because they have contact with these printers and the packaging people and you always get a better costings from them directly. So I always like to check the prices with three or four people before I finalize something. So it's good for you to check it yourself as well just to get an idea of what's the cost of packaging in the market. The reason I tell you to go with the manufacturer to get a full package cost is because this um, packaging, printing, labeling, all these people, they've got minimum order quantity. So it can be 10,000 pieces or it can be even 100,000 pieces if you're going for pouch printing. So those minimum order quantity will not be viable for you sometimes. But for them, it might be doable if they're buying cartons in bulk, you know, so they'll get a better cost. So that's why I recommend for, the, for you to get a full package costing. And you also have to make sure you negotiate with the manufacturer you have to tell them, suppose they are quoting you one pound, you know, for like a pallet cost per packet uh, for a pallet cost. You have to make sure you ask them, okay, so what will be my cost if I order multiple pallets? So negotiate the costings with the manufacturer as well. Then you have to find out, is it going to be the delivered cost? Or is it the FOB cost? As I mentioned in my previous video, importing into the UK, there are two types of costings, which is FOB and CNF. FOB is freight on board, which means it's the cost up to the sellers or the supplier's port. And CNF means cost and freight, or it can be cost insurance and freight, which means it covers the freight as well, and some cases insurance as well, up to the buyer's port. So here in this example, let's say it's from Mumbai port to London Felixstowe or Southampton. So it will be FOB Mumbai port. And if it's CNF, it will be CNF London Felixstowe or CNF Southampton. So it will be good again if you can get it covered to CNF because you don't have the headache of getting the freight cost yourself. Again, double check if the freight cost is something which, uh, you know, if they are not over quoting you or not. So that's something which you need to double check as well. And these um, shipping cost again, it can vary if it's a full container load or if it's a, a less than a container load, if it's a pallet, uh, you know, coat. For a full container load, obviously, you'll get a better coat. And um, if it's a pallet coat, then it will be a bit more expensive. Again, if it's a dry good or ambient goods or if it's a reefer container, which is a temperature controlled goods. So if it's dry goods or ambient goods, it will be slightly cheaper. But for temperature controlled goods or it's called a reefer container where you have either chilled products. Usually chilled products doesn't come from abroad because it takes one month for uh, the goods to come from India into the UK. So it's not doable for a chilled product, but frozen products can come from abroad. So that will be very expensive. Just to give you an idea, for me to import a 20-foot container from uh, India into London, it cost me around 1,800, maximum $2,000, you know. So it can vary depending from the port to the port and then timings as well. So during these times, it has been a bit higher. So that's a rough guide of what the cost will be. For a dry product, if it's a container load, it will be maybe $1,000 or something like that. So it can vary depending on the ship you get and the route the ship takes as well. Next, once it reaches the port is your next costing. So you have to pay the duty levy or the VAT. 
if it's at the airport then the courier company the royal mail or fedex or parcel post whichever company it is they'll contact you or they'll text you usually for saying that it is time for you to pay the duty or the levy or the vat and they'll tell you what the cost will be so once you pay that then the goods will be delivered to you at the port what happens is you usually use a freight forwarder because it's a bit more complicated because it's a bigger consignment and and i would highly recommend you use a freight forwarder as well because the paperwork filing and everything is not that easy on the hmrc website you have to make sure you give all the paperwork like the packing list the bill of lading the invoice and all the other paperwork beforehand to the freight forwarder and inform them that the container is coming otherwise what happens is if it gets delayed at the port for some reason let's say the paperwork is not proper they need more paperwork or more details of your consignment or if it's a holiday or if it's a weekend you know these can be the kind of delays that can come up or they want to uh, check your consignment open the boxes and they want to inspect it they want to do some health inspection there so these will be the delays that can be expected at the port so what happens is then you will end up paying the demurrage charges i would recommend you keep your paperwork ready just get all your stuff done the other things are not in our hand if they are opening for health inspection or not but at least you get your stuff done so that you don't pay these demurrage charges demurrage means you are paying that extra like a fine or a fees to the shipping agency and the port because for keeping your goods there so that's what they'll be charging you and for a reefer container it will be very expensive so you may as well make sure it all gets cleared as soon as possible so yeah so once it reaches the port then um, you will be uh, asked to pay the duty levy or the vat which can be varying according to the type of the goods the country of origin your uh, value of the goods and in some cases it can be depending on the weight of the goods as well so all these will be calculated by the freight forwarder and they usually have an account with the hmrc for paying all these duty rates and then what they do is they'll charge you in their invoice for all the duty rates and also the customs fees the port fees or anything like that will be there on the, the freight forwarder invoice which will be invoiced to you as a one full invoice and then you pay the freight forwarder once that is all sorted then you the next stage is to arrange the delivery so it will be the road transport from the uh, port to your warehouse or wherever your consolidation center is some people what they use if you're selling it on amazon or if you're selling it to somebody else then the what they use they use a consolidation company where the goods get consolidated they'll pick and pack and they'll send it out on behalf of the other customers so warehouse again once it comes there you need to think of the uh, weekly storage rent and then you'll also have other picking and packing charges as well let's say for example my container has come in so you book a slot with the warehouse saying that my container is going to reach on such and such date at this time so you book the slot with them the container comes there and as soon as the container comes there they offload the container i send them the packing list beforehand saying these are the goods that is inside the container and what they do is according to the packing list they'll sort out the goods so let's say i've got uh, 20 pack samosa 50 pack samosa i've got spring rolls coconut jackfruit so what they do is they put it according to the item on different pallets so 20 pack samosa will be on one pallet the jackfruit will be on a different pallet coconut will be on a different pallet so for sorting it all out and labeling all the pallets and keeping it separately they'll charge you so offloading the container putting it on a pallet putting it on a pallet according to the height required and then shrink wrapping the pallet then for the pallet itself they'll charge you so those are the small small charges that will come when the goods reach the warehouse and then finally the weekly storage rent so those are the charges that you need to make sure then when the customer places the order i will say okay my customer wants uh, 20 cartons of samosa 20 of jackfruit 30 of uh, you know spring rolls they'll put everything on a pallet keep it ready for the transport company to pick it up so that will be charged for you again for picking up the cartons and palletizing it that will be another charge then the transport company comes and picks it up sends it to the customer that will be the next costings that will be coming to you so once it reaches the warehouse and then that the, the next cost will be sending it to the customer that's the next costing let's say you don't have a warehouse you just have a few boxes that has come in the air courier you know just as a trial to see how things are going it comes to your house if it comes to your house and let's say you're planning to sell it online so if it is online you have your own website 
or if you're using a third party platform e-commerce platform amazon or ebay then you have to make sure you think about the commission charges that the platform is going to use or these days there are even food companies like deliveroo uber eats you've got other uh, you know platforms as well so every platform will use a percentage of the uh, the invoice value of uh, what you are selling if you are selling it online you will be using couriers to send your products to the customer which means you're doing d2c so there again you have to make sure you include the costings of the e-commerce packaging because you have to pick and pack put the goods in a uh, you know in a carton or in a packaging and then what will be your courier charges like say royal mail they charge you five pound up to one kilo you know then the next thought is okay so what should the minimum order be on my website should it be 20 pounds should it be 25 pounds so that i can cover my five pounds that's something which you have to decide as well just to give you an idea an average minimum order quantity which i have seen on the websites are 20 to 25 pounds but if it's frozen because it's expensive, it goes higher or chilled products. But if it's a normal dry goods, then you can stick to 20, 25 pounds and see if you can cover the cost of the couriers as well. Again, with Royal Mail or other courier people, make sure if you have big volumes going on, you can negotiate with them the pricing, you know, the costings of the courier charges. If we take the another scenario, let's say you are selling the products to the shops. So there again, the, you'll have to make sure you include the margins like, you know, 20, 25% margin for the shopkeeper. If you're using a distributor, his margin there and also promotions, because if you're selling it to shops, you will have to do some promotions. Even online, you'll need to do some promotions, maybe like an online launch offer or seasonal offers, new year offers or Diwali offers or, you know, those kind of offers. So there again, you will be squeezing your margin. So you'll be squeezing your profit. So think of those kind of uh, costings that's coming as well. And if you're using a delivery driver or are you going to deliver it yourself to the shops and the restaurants and the, uh, the coffee shops, are you using a sales agent? So those are the other things that you need to make sure you include in your costings. So that was a quick wrap up of uh, the costings that is involved from uh, the beginning till the end, till you get the goods into the UK and maybe you sell the products to your customers as well. Hope that has uh, helped you in understanding the breakdown of the costings involved. So um, if you think of any other costings or if you feel that there are other toppings that needs to be covered, please feel free to put it in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you soon with another video. Take care. Bye-bye.